Chasing Squirrels There are a lot of great walks in a dog's life. There's the first walk of the morning after a good stretch where you can mark your territory all over the block. There's the walk around a new park with strange smells and fuzzy friends. There's even a few brisk walks a year when the human decides to try out jogging and you can feel the wind in your ears. But for Charlie the Mutt, there was one walk that was his favorite beyond all the others. There was one walk that came around just once a year and offered the best smells a dog could ever hope to smell. There was one walk that Charlie looked forward to all the long, dreary months of winter. Oh, it's the first walk of spring, he bellowed, practically leaping out the apartment door. He pulled at his old red leash, not even caring that his collar was tight against his broad neck. Oh, easy, buddy, laughed his owner. She called herself Jane, and she laughed all the time. She was the best, and Charlie loved her very much. We don't bark like that, remember? Charlie hung his head so she'd know he was sorry, but he couldn't help it if his tail kept wagging. It was the first walk of spring, and they were going on their favorite little trail through the woods. Their new apartment had a real forest nearby, and they got to walk in it almost every day. During the winter, it had been pretty quiet, but now it was spring. Charlie couldn't help but strain at his leash. They made their way through the neighborhood, and when the concrete turned to dirt, they entered the woods. Charlie was instantly overwhelmed by the sheer life of it all. The flowers were blooming sweet and fragrant, the earth was wet and rich and muddy with worms to roll in, and best of all, bushy squirrels were rustling back and forth. Squirrels! Squirrels! he barked, lunging into the trees. His leash drew him up short, and Jane grunted and laughed. Hey, you gotta relax, she said squatting to scratch behind his ears. You can't go barking up a storm and yanking on your leash every time you see a squirrel. It's spring. There's going to be a lot of squirrels, bud. Charlie wagged his tail and licked her face. Of course he would control himself. He was a good boy after all, even if it was the first walk of spring. They walked happily into the woods and it just kept getting better. They passed other people, and Charlie was allowed to smell them and their dogs. The birds chittered and flew back and forth, and he jumped at them playfully. Every root was hiding some interesting smell, and every muddy print told a story to his sensitive nose. It was heaven. Suddenly, a squirrel darted across the trail. Doing his best to be a good boy, Charlie had been ignoring them in the distance, but this one ran right in front of his paws, so close he could almost taste the tufty tail. He lost it. In a second, he was barking. Squirrel! Squirrel! And pulling on his leash so hard that poor Jane nearly stumbled. Charlie! Charlie, stop! She said. And finally, after another couple of pulls, he relaxed. The squirrel had disappeared into the forest. Everything was quiet, for now. Listen, bud, Jane knelt down again. If you can't listen to the rules, we're going to go home. I know you want to chase squirrels, but it's dangerous. You could get lost or hurt or who knows what. The rules are for your own good, so just stop trying to get the squirrels, okay? No squirrels. Got it, Charlie barked, wagging his tail to show her that he meant it. Of course, she didn't speak dog, but she seemed to understand him well enough. She was a good human, and she gave Charlie food and toys and a nice warm bed, plus all the belly scratches he wanted. So he really didn't want to let her down. This time, he had to be a good boy for real, even if it was the first walk of spring. They walked deeper into the forest, and there were squirrels everywhere. They chittered and chattered and leapt and lunged and swung and swam, and everywhere Charlie looked, it was squirrels, squirrels, squirrels. I'm the goodest boy. I'm the goodest boy. I'm the goodest boy, he said to himself over and over.
It took every last ounce of willpower that Charlie had, but he ignored the squirrels and kept on walking. Good boy, Jane said. That's my excellent walker. They kept on the trail, and Jane let Charlie pause to smell all those first walk of spring smells. He found rabbit droppings and a raccoon smell and some salamander holes, and he laughed at a little stream, and he even rolled in some mud when Jane wasn't looking. If it ended there, it would have been the perfect first walk of spring. But of course, it didn't end there. They were about halfway through the walk, deep into the woods, when Jane stopped and reached into her bag. Charlie immediately sat, his mouth watering. He knew treat time when he saw it. You've been such a good boy about the squirrels, she said, pulling out a peanut butter treat. Here you go. She threw it in the air and Charlie launched up to catch it. Unfortunately, he wasn't the best at catching treats and it bounced off his snout and rolled into the dirty path. Jane laughed and Charlie went to get the treat. His tail was wagging like crazy. Peanut butter was his favorite, and a little dirt just made it that much better. Treat time! Treat time! A treat rhyme for treat time! He sang to himself. As he trotted towards the treat, a squirrel darted from a nearby tree. In a second, it skittered across the path, grabbed Charlie's treat, and took off into the forest. No! Squirrel! Treat! Squeet! He charged after the squirrel. Jane saw it coming and wrapped the leash around her hand, pulling him back. Charlie, no! She said. No squirrels! Stop! But Charlie couldn't take it. The squirrel plus his treat? No way! The indignity! The embarrassment! The peanut butter! He kept tugging on his leash and finally spun around, digging in his paws. Jane pulled harder, and Charlie pulled harder, and suddenly, the collar slipped over Charlie's head, and he was free. Come back here! he shouted, barreling after the squirrel. He could still see his treat, hanging out of either side of the little thief's mouth. Charlie! He heard Jane's call in the fading distance, but the squirrel was just ahead. He couldn't stop. Charlie chased the critter around trees and over logs, and they leapt over a stream and around a big rock, and then the squirrel disappeared straight up a tall, crooked oak. Hey! Hey, squirrel! Charlie barked, jumping to bounce his paws off the tree. Get down here! I want to shake you until your fur falls off! It'll be fun! Come on! But the squirrel only chattered at him and then disappeared into the treetops. Oh, good for nothing, squirrels, Charlie grumbled to himself, scratching behind his ears. Can't even let themselves be chew toys. Charlie turned around to head back to Jane, but he only saw a wall of trees and bushes and shadows. He turned the other way and saw the same. Uh, Jane? Charlie barked weakly, but when he listened close, he only heard the strange sounds of the forest. Suddenly, Charlie realized he had chased that squirrel for an awfully long way, and he was definitely, completely, totally lost. He sniffed at the air, but there were too many new spring smells. He couldn't smell the way back at all. Jane? Jane! He bellowed, but his barks were lost in the trees. All of a sudden, the first walk of spring had lost some of its luster. The woods that had seemed so nice and bright were now dark and just a little creepy. Charlie's ears drooped and his tail tucked down. What do I do now? He asked himself. When no answer came, he picked the direction he felt best about and started walking. A long time passed. At least, it seemed like a long time to Charlie. The shadows stretched and moved and grew, and the sounds turned even stranger. The woods seemed to loom around him. Charlie felt so very all alone, like a piece of kibble that had rolled under the stove. What if he couldn't find his way out? What if he was lost in the woods forever? He imagined it. No more Jane, 
No more walks, no more peanut butter treats, and no more belly scratches at bedtime. No more pizza crusts, and no more big fluffy dog bed. What had he done? Why had he ever run? Charlie started to tear through the woods, panic gripping him. He ran around rocks and trees and hills, but no matter which way he went, the woods just seemed to get deeper and darker. That rock even looked familiar. Was he going in circles? He was never going to get out. Jane! he barked, but it felt quiet, even to his sensitive ears. Like a cruel joke, everywhere he walked, he kept seeing more squirrels. He didn't have the heart to chase them anymore. He wished he had never chased them. He wished, he wished he had listened to Jane. If he had just done what she asked and not been so impulsive, he would probably be sprawled out in the back seat of her car right now. But no, he just had to chase the squirrels. So instead of hanging his head out of the car window, feeling the breeze in his fur, he was walking in miserable circles through the woods. Now he would have to drink from streams instead of his big, clean bowl. He'd have to try and catch squirrels for food instead of getting meaty gravy chunks. Worst of all, he'd have to figure out how to scratch his own belly. Charlie couldn't help it. He started to howl. It was long and loud and sad, and it echoed all through the woods and came back to him. It sounded so sad, he howled again, right along with himself, and now the sound of it bounded all through the trees. Charlie? The dog froze mid-howl. Had he... had he heard something? His ears perked up. Charlie! It had been so quiet, he cocked his head to one side. Charlie, where are you? Jane! It was Jane! I'm here! He woofed, running towards the sound of her voice. Charlie, is that you? Here! Jane! I'm here! He barked his head off, running madly. Charlie! Jane called, and then they saw each other across a clearing. She dropped to her knees and threw her arms wide. Oh, I'm so glad I found you! Charlie bounded across the clearing and leapt into her arms, licking her face. Hooray, hooray, hooray! Charlie vowed then and there that he would listen better and never get lost in the woods again. It was hard to pay attention sometimes, but now that he'd been lost, he finally understood that some rules had good reasons, even if the squirrels were a bunch of nut-hoarding punks. He wanted to tell all that to Jane, but he couldn't stop licking her, and his own tongue kept getting in the way. Jane seemed to understand, though. She always seemed to understand. Ready to head home, boy? Woof, woof! And another wild first walk of spring completed, they made their way back down the trail. Charlie rode the whole way home with his head out the window and his fur blowing in the breeze. The End Thanks for listening.